Hi, I'm John Isaacs. I'm an engineer uh, and I, I'm a specialist in fitness equipment. I want to show you how to put together a cross trainer. Uh, so when you receive your cross trainer, you'll get a pile of parts rather like this. And you can see you need quite a bit of space. So my advice is to clear a nice big area and perhaps allow yourself the best part of 45 minutes to an hour if you've never done a cross trainer before. I'm going to show you some tips that we use in the trade to put these together and point out some of the main, the main areas where you could run into difficulty and give yourself problems. Uh, so if there's two people, get two people to, you know, an extra person to give you a hand putting the machine together is ideal and it makes life a lot easier. But if you can't, then there is a way you can do this as a, as a one person build, which is what I'm going to do. So I've already pre-assembled some of the parts. So the, the column mast and the legs, for example, I've pre-assembled those. That's pretty straightforward. Just follow the instructions. There's nothing too much to worry about there. But there is a care point when you come to bring this whole assembly then to the main machine here. You can see how it, it all wants to move around, so you've got to be careful with what you do. And the point is you've got to make some connections just here at the end of the column where it goes into the frame of the machine. So if you're doing this as a one-person build, it, it's ideal to just balance the column on the end of the machine like that and then play, pay close attention to these connections and these wires. The last thing you want to do is be snagging these wires, getting them caught on the metal work and damaging the pins. So work out which connector goes where, and on the connectors you'll see there's little, they have to go one way usually. Uh, you can force them and they can go the wrong way, but be careful that you get them the right way. And usually there's a latch, uh, so you can tell which way to uh, put them together. And also pay close attention to the pins. The pins on the connector have to go into the mating holes of the socket, and you should get a nice positive click when they latch together. Uh, they can only go one way normally, so you, you can't get connectors sort of crossed around the wrong way, just like that. And then tuck any excess either down into the base or up into the column here. And then it's a matter of then lifting the column. And then just slide it on, being careful not to trap any wires in between the metal faces here. You can then get your column screws and pop those in. And you should find they should go in nice and easy. And sometimes it helps if you, uh, if you have a bit of trouble getting one in, sometimes it helps if you just sort of push or pull the column just to bring the holes into alignment. That's always quite useful. But I find it's, uh, it's a good tip to start them off by hand because you can be certain then that you're not going to cross thread them. And cross thread them is when you put the screws in at an angle into the, into the hole. Uh, and it sort of minces the thread up, and especially when you get a, um, an Allen key on it and tighten them up, it's a one-way trip then, and you can damage both the screw and the thread. So I'm just going to pop these other two in. And there's one on my side as well. This is, uh, this is a source of where there's a lot of noise usually on cross trains when we've been out, when either myself or one of my team have been out to repair cross trainers on site. Quite often we find this particular joint is a source of noises such as creaking, squeaking. You can imagine when you're using the machine, there's a lot of, lot of movement to this pivot. So it's really quite important you get these tightened up right. So this is an Allen key and I'm just going to use this and I'll just tighten it up. Not too much, so I'm not kind of leaning my whole body weight into it or getting my foot and trying to crank it round. It's just a case of pushing it till it really doesn't want to go anymore. Nice and tight. I'll do the same with all those. And if you leave any of these loose or leave any of the screws out, then potentially you will get a creaking noise when you use the machine. Pop your trim back on, and that's the job done, nice and tight. So while you're down here, you might as well secure these lower leg pivots. On this machine, it's nice and easy. This is a straight through bolt that goes through. Sometimes there's a bit of lubrication you need, need to put on, perhaps a little bit of grease, lithium grease, or a little bit of oil. On this particular one, we don't need any. And then use the spanners that you've got just to tighten them up. And then you've usually got some plastic trim which clips on the side and, and screws in. You can screw that up. And the same on this side. 
So when you've done that, you can then get to the business end up here. This is the display or the console or the, the user console. And there's a number of connections in here which you can make. And the trick with this is just to make sure those connections are nice and uh, uh, that they're done up nice and tight, that you've not got any bent pins and that you've not got any trapped wires. And then be very careful as you put the console on, just, just keep an eye on those wires and make sure that you don't sort of have any wires sort of folded and trapped. It should be nice and it should sit, sit nice and level. And you'll feel if you've got any wires trapped and if you have, just adjust it before you pop the screws in. And then usually there's four screws that go on. So again, I'm gonna tighten these by hand to start with, get them started, make sure they're not cross-threaded and finish off with my screwdriver and just do these just finger tight really just like that and when you've got one in the other four should just follow straight in there we are and there's two at the bottom two more at the bottom to do that's that piece Quite often there's trim which you have to put on. These plastic bits, by the way, I call them trim, they're plastic covers. Uh, they're just sort of finishing pieces, really. And on this fitness machine, there's actually screws that go straight through the column. And if you'll notice, there's a harness, a wiring harness that goes straight down the column as well, which means that it's quite a likelihood I could get screws trapped. I'm just gonna pay attention to that. And I'm gonna check, just make sure those screw holes are clear, which they are, I can, I can see that nice and clear. And then I can put my screws in. And when you tighten your screws up, you're just feeling them too. You can feel when they start to go tight and, and that's it. You don't want to overdo those because you will break the plastic. So one in the top, one in the bottom on this one. And that's it. So essentially you've got the machine built now. There's other bits of plastic trim to put on. There's usually covers to go on the arms uh, to make everything look neat and tidy so they can go on too. And finally, there's the power cord. Uh, this is also another source of problems. You've got your brand new machine, uh, you're desperate to use it, you pop the power cord in and then you look for a socket and you think, oh, it's, it's right over there. And of course, if you're not careful, you can, you can snatch that lead and damage it. Or indeed, you can run it the wrong way through the machine and when you use the machine you can uh, snag the lead and rip the cord out the back. Uh, or as I often see people will just plug it into a convenience socket nearby and then whoop trip over the lead and before you know it you've ripped the whole socket out the back. So just be careful of that and make sure you've got a, um, a nice safe route for that cable and that's it and if you do that then your machine will be good to go, it won't squeak, it won't rattle and it should give you many years of service.